Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In today's video, I am going to program function block diagrams on Open PLC to solve an industrial problem. The problem that I am going to address is written over here and a schematic is also shown over here. The problem is of bonding two parts. So in a certain industry, two parts are to be glued together using a pneumatic press, which is shown over here in form of a cylinder. So what happens is that a worker places the two parts with the bond applied between them over here into the designated space. This is sensed by a sensor, which I'm seeing over here is sensor B1. It senses the presence of the part. So once the part is present over here and the worker presses this momentarily pressed non-latching push button, which is labeled as S, the pneumatic press, which is shown by a cylinder, will force these two parts together. We want this force to be applied for five seconds. So this extension sensor, which is labeled as sensor B2, will tell us whether the cylinder has fully extended or not. Once the cylinder has extended, we want a timer to run for five seconds. And after that, we want the cylinder to retract. And additionally, we want to count this as one cycle. So after that, the worker will remove these parts, place new parts, press this S1 switch again, and the cylinder will apply the force to the new parts. Once this happens five times, that is five different parts have been processed, we want the machine to take a rest of 20 seconds. So this is all the things which we want to implement. So let's move to open PLC software and we are going to implement this thing using function block diagrams. So in the open PLC software, I'm going to create a new project. I have to make a new folder where this project will be saved. Over here, I can name this program, but I'm going to go with the default and then I can select the programming language. So I'm going to select function block diagram, which is FBD. So to start programming, the very first thing is I need to add some variables. I'm going to click on this add variable and a variable will be added. Let me name it as start because I'm going to use this variable as a start button, which is S1. So its type will be Boolean. Now I'm going to add another variable. And this variable will be used to check whether the part is present over there or not. So this will be part uh, and I can label it as SV1, which is sensor V1. And once again, it is Boolean. A third variable will be required to check whether the cylinder has fully extended or not. So if the cylinder is turned on, I'm supposing that it has extended. So I'm going to use a cylinder extension sensor, which is SV2, sensor V2. So I guess that's all the things which I need currently. If I need some other variables, I'll add those up later on. So the very first thing is I need to define a variable over here in this space, and this will be an input variable. So I'm, I have selected the class as input, and then it is associated with the variable start, and I can place it over here. After that, the second variable which I want is whether the part is present or not. So once again, it is an input variable. And I'm, this time I'm going to use this part SB1 and I've placed it over here. So now what I want is, I want that when I press the start button and the part is present, the cylinder should extend. So this is the third variable which I want to turn on. So this variable will act as an output. So the very first thing is that I need to add these two things together so that if both of these things are on, only then the cylinder should extend. So now I need an AND function block. So for that, I'm going to click on this function block icon, click somewhere over here. And from this list, I can find in the bitwise section, this AND block. Now I can connect this thing over here. And I'm not going to connect this start pin over here because what I want to do is as the start button is a momentarily pressed non-latching button, if I press it once, the cylinder should turn on, but if I leave it or depress it, the cylinder should remain on. So I need to latch the cylinder. So for that, I need an OR function. And I have talked about this technique in my previous video, but I'm going to repeat it over here. So this can be achieved like this. I need an OR function. Start button is connected to this input. And the output of this function will go over here. And the output of this AND is now going to go into this output variable, which is of cylinder extension. So I'm going to need a variable, which is this time an output variable, 
cylinder extension over here. Additionally, I want this input to come from here as well. So now what is happening over here is that if I press the start button once and the cylinder is not on, which means this output is off, so this OR will be getting 1 over here and 0 over here. So the output would be 1. And the part is present. The, so both inputs of this AND block will become 1 and the cylinder will turn on. Now if I release this start button, for this OR, the output will remain 1 because this start button is now giving a 0, but the cylinder is on, but this connection is giving a 1 signal to this OR. So the output will still remain on. So this is how you latch a certain output. So now this variable, which is an output variable signifying the extension of the cylinder, will be latched. So once this variable is on, that is cylinder has extended, I want a timer to run. And I want that timer for five seconds. I can insert a timer by clicking on this function block, then clicking somewhere over here. And from standard function blocks, I can see a T on timer over here. I want this timer to run if, this, if the cylinder extend variable is on. So I have to insert this variable once again as an input class now. Notice that over here, this variable is as an output class, whereas over here, it is an input variable. So whatever is the value of this variable over here, the same value will be present over here. So I have connected it with a T on timer. Now to assign a preset value to it, I need to define a variable which will be in fact a constant. So I can write a constant expression over here and to define a preset time for timers in OpenPLC, you have to write T, then hash, then after that you have to type in the time and the units. So 5s would mean 5 seconds. I'm going to connect it with the preset time. So this timer is going to run for 5 seconds. The elapsed time will be shown over here on this pin, whereas the done pin is this Q pin. So once the timer has completely timed, this Q pin is going to go high. So once this pin is high, I want to disconnect my cylinder. It should turn off. So how I can achieve that thing is, I can delete this connection and can insert another AND block over here. Sorry. So this AND block will be checking whether the part is present and the timer is not done. Sorry, I have to insert a NOT gate over here. So I'm going to use this function block, then go into bitwise and use a NOT gate. So now if the part is present and the timer is not done, this output will be on. Now I can connect it over here once again. So once the timer has completed the timing, this bit is going to go high. After not, it is going to go low. The output of this AND, it is going to go low. Output of this AND will go low and the cylinder will turn off. Additionally, when this timer is done timing, I want to count one as well. So I need a counter now. So for that, I'm going to insert a function block of start counter, which is present over here. So I can directly attach this counter pin to this done pin of timer. Whenever it is done timing, the counter will count one. And I want a preset value of five this time. So once again, I'm going to create a constant. This time, I'm just going to write five. And it will be attached over here. So this counter is going to count till five. And after that, this Q pin, which is the done counting pin, it is going to go high. So once this pin is high, I want to run a timer. And as long as the timer is running, I don't want the cylinder to turn on whether the part is present and the worker is pressing the start button. So I want to restrict the worker to turn on this cylinder. So first of all, I need a timer. I'm just going to copy paste this timer over here. So when this counter is done, the timer will turn on and this timer should run for 20 seconds. So I'm going to copy paste this thing and attach it over here and double click on it to change its expression to 20 seconds. So as long as now this timer is running or this counter has completed its counting, we want to restrict the turning on of the cylinder. Once again, I'm going to use this technique which, is, which has been used over here to do this thing. I just need to rearrange the things a bit. I can use a NOT gate once again 
So if this timer has completed the timing, the output of this NOT gate will go low. And if it is low, I don't want this cylinder to turn on. So I can use an AND gate over here. And I can delete this connection and connect this AND to this block and then route it towards here. So now what is going to happen is that once this counter has completed its counting, the Q pin is going to go high. This out of the NOT is going to go low. The output of this AND will go low. And similarly, the output of this AND will go low and the cylinder will not be extended or cannot be turned on. So as long as this pin Q remains high, the cylinder cannot be turned on. So once this timer, which is of 20 seconds, I'm using it for resting of the machine, has completed the timing, I want this Q to go back to low so that the X cylinder can be operated. So once this timer has completed the timing, I want to reset this counter. So I can connect this Q pin to this reset pin of the counter. So that's it. I guess I have covered everything. Now let us just run it and test whether the things are working as we designed them or not. To run it, I'm going to go and click on the Start VLC Simulation. So once the simulation has started, you can click on this Debug Instance. It will open another tab over here. And now you can see that there is some power in some of the lines. So now over here, you can turn on or off certain things. So let's turn on the Start button by right-clicking on it click on force value and over here you can click on the toggle value. So when you toggle it, you can see that it has turned on and the output of this OR operation has turned on and till here the output is green. Now if I turn on this part present sensor, that is part is present and the worker is pressing the start switch, the cylinder should turn on. So you can see that this AND is already receiving a high signal and this AND is already receiving a high signal and if I convert this thing as high, so let's do it. And I'm going to toggle it. You can see that this cylinder has turned on. If the cylinder is on, this timer is running. Now I need to turn off this start button. So now the start button has been released. The cylinder ran for five seconds. It remained on for five seconds. And the timer ran for five seconds. And once those five seconds were over, the counter counted once. Over here, it is two written because I left this start button on for quite a long time, so the whole process ran two times. So let me toggle this once again, toggle it again to zero, and you can see that cylinder is still on, timer is timing, now the timing is complete, the cylinder has turned off, and the counter has counted till three. And let's do it once more. Over here you can see that the timer is running, and now the counter has counted till four. And now this is the last time before the machine is going to go into the rest. So now the cylinder is running and after five seconds, the cylinder has turned off, counter has counted till five and you can see that this Q is on now. Now another timer is running and you can see over here that it is timing. Now if I press start button, you can see that the cylinder is not turning on. So once this timer has expired, now again, if the part is present and the worker presses the start button, the cylinder will once again turn on. You can see that now the cylinder is on and after five seconds, the cylinder will turn off and then the counter has again counted. So it will keep on going and doing the same thing. So dear learners, I hope you have understood how I have used function block diagrams to address some problem which can be encountered in an industry. If you still have any queries or couldn't understand anything, you can go back in the video and watch it again, or you can contact me through YouTube comments or my email address. I would be more than happy to answer your queries. Till next time, thank you and take care.